Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we are revisiting a keyboard we recently looked at. I gotta be honest, I've seen a lot of people having fun with it and I've been doing reviews primarily for, for a bit because I've been busy and I haven't done a mod in a while. So I said, why not? Let's go ahead and do this mod. I've been asked some questions about it. I don't know. I do know CIY for the most part builds very good kits. This is a um, Klim shift, but from what everybody has said, and from what I can see, it appears to be a rebranded CIY X79, 65% Bluetooth 2.4 and USB-C compatibility, um, has a detachable shroud, but this one in particular also came with an entire set of extra keycaps that are white um, shine, with shine through. These are black with shine through. So, I mean, it went on sale last week for 1997. This is a steal for 1997. Now it has gone back up to a normal price. I don't know if it's a normal price, but it's listed at 29.97. Now for somebody getting into the hobby, I wouldn't say this is the only option, but if you need wireless and you're looking to mod, I think this is a great keyboard to keep on that list. Um, I recently, well, actually it's been like three months now, did a 65% keyboard list and showed some different options and was going to do well am going to do a 75 percent but problem is every time i go to do a 75 percent a new one comes up so anyway uh i will be refreshing the 65 percent list in one and i think I'll, this board will be making it on there but today what we're going to do is open her up i may try a new material that i haven't used before for modding depending on how everything looks in there i haven't really taken a look um and we're going to be changing out the switches and putting on some uh, new caps, then doing a sound test and doing a comparison between the stock sound test and the sound test. And I think we'll probably only need about an hour, hour and a half or so. I mean, obviously, I'll slim everything down. You guys won't have to stick around for everything. I'll speed up the, the repetitive parts. But let's see what we can do with just a little bit of elbow grease and some TLC to make this Klim Shift or X79 sound and feel as good as it can. Let's get started. All right, so we flip this over and we can get to the plate. All right. Huh. Oh yeah, the studs must be all the way, all the way down. Okay, I see. And we have no padding between the plate and the PC. And we have this tiny amount of foam. Very open cell. Now that does capture some, but but not much. All right, let's get this disconnected. Which way would make more sense? It looks like this one. Trying to understand why there's seven cables on the, oh, the Bluetooth. Yeah, all right, the controller for the Bluetooth must on that daughter board. Should be, I'm not sure. So, let's um, move you guys out of the way. All right, I think that ver verifies it, X79. So, 
This is the CIYX79. There has got to be a way to program QMK on these boards. I mean, it's got the headers for the Arduino. I just haven't had the time to go in there and see. But there is hope. I think Chinese manufacturers will start releasing QMK source files. I think it's going to happen. I really do. Anyway, so let's see what we got here. Um, I, I, this is useful. We're just getting rid of that. All right, so we've got a skinny little battery there. We've got, oh, look at that wire. You see, it was pinched. Uh, that's no bueno, but it's easily fixed. I think it's fine for right. So, all right, so I said I wanted to keep it this simple, nice and easy. So I'm gonna go with some sip and fit. Now this is uh, obviously perforated. It makes it easier to just literally cut it by hand and throw it in there. Um, and then on top of that, I'm gonna put some polyfill, just a little bit of it. It's surprising what it can do. Um, I'm still gonna do Tempest Tape Mod. I am going to do the PE Foam, foam Mod. Excuse me, I can't speak today. And I'm either gonna do the weather strips or I'm just gonna use the pre-made pads for each uh, key switch. It just helps to pre prevent, create well, a bit of an acoustic like chamber in the side where the switch is. Um, so let's get started.
here we are. We've spent roughly an hour and a half. We did minimal modifications, but enough that I think would make a significant difference. So I used the, the, the tear uh, liner, drawer, drawer liner, the, the rip and tear um, for the bottom case. I also put a light layer of polyfill on there. I then taped up the back of the PCB with three layers of tape, two horizontal and one vertical. Uh, don't ask me why I do it. I just do it. It works for me. I added uh, pads to the plate. Now these, this last batch of pads I got are a little bit thinner than the ones that I'm used to, but I think they should still provide a little bit of just dampening, uh, just trying to dampen the noise. I did add a layer of PE foam on top of the PCB, cutting out for the stabilizers and for the stabilizer keys as well as a couple of keys where the PE foam got torn. I added PE foam pads that are adhesive, so directly to. Then I loaded up these AJAZ Doyu switches. Uh, they're 50 gram tactile switches. They're not bad. These are stock, so um, didn't have the time to leave it. Like I said, I just wanted to do a quick mod as I have done one in a while and I wanted to see how far I could get this $20 keyboard to sound so um, yeah I, I um, just cleaned up the lube that was on there and put new lube on the stabilizers I did not use tape as they were pretty tight and I did not do plumbers mod which I usually do on them but I really I just I don't feel they need it. They're actually really good um, stock stabilizers, which is rare for budget, let alone this cheap. So how good can a $20 keyboard sound? Let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of this as it is now. I'm just gonna do it just with the shroud. Um, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. On the X77, perhaps it did because it's a bigger shroud. On this one, I don't think uh, that it is. And then I'll do a super cut with the uh, stock sound test so you can get a difference of what it was out of the box and what it was after some uh, modifications. Obviously, stock, I mean, uh, using some lube switches would probably go a long way, but these sound pretty good. So I think it sounds decent enough. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next video, or the next transmission. Keep calm and keyboard on.